In our last Red Dead video, we paid our respects to the gang members and allies who didn't make it to the end of the story. However, in today's video, we're doing the contrast. We are going to go and revisit some old friends, or at least those that we can find who are still alive. Obviously excluding any that show up in the epilogue story, such as Uncle, Sadie and Charles. Why now, three years almost after the release of this game? The satisfaction of doing it, and I've got nothing else to do. So join us as we go and find some old friends. Obviously the best time to do this is after you have finished the epilogue, so first on our list is finding Mary Beth, who we can find at the post office slash train station in Valentine. Here we will find her buried in a book waiting for her train on the platform. Mary Beth. John? John, is it you? How the hell are oh, you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Abigail, is she? She's well. Jack's growing up. Sweet boy. Not anymore. <laughs> but he's okay. How are you? I'm well. I, I'm right now. Silly romances, but it's fun. Oh, it's such fun. <laughs> Do you? My pen name is Leslie Dupont. It's sort of French, sort of ambiguous. The books are unambiguously awful, but they sell. Good for you. I'm so proud. I still think about you all. That was... That was quite a time. Yeah. Arthur. Arthur saved my life before he passed. I don't talk about him much, but I think about him. Me too. And Dutch? <laughs> Ran off someplace. All aboard. Such a shame. Last call. Oh, anyway, John, I better get on my train. It's really lovely seeing you. Oh, here. It's for you. Thank you. Take care now. Bye. After a brief conversation, Mary Beth boards her train and leaves us with a book. In this book, we can read a section of her novel, and I suppose she wasn't lying when she said it was unambiguously awful, but hey, at least it sells. Not exactly my kind of literature, however, the takeaway is that Mary Beth became an author. A fitting and peaceful conclusion to the story of one who would often be found buried in a book around the camp. Next, we need to head to Rhodes, for this is where we will find Simon Pearson, the Vanderlind Gang's camp cook. Once in Rhodes, we need to head to the general store, where we will notice a sign that indicates exactly who we will find within, as Pearson appears to be the new Rhodes general store proprietor. It's just a fancy word for owner, don't deep it. Don't be causing the world. A new customer! Take a look around! John Marston? I don't believe it! I thought you were dead! Pearson, what are you doing here? <laughs> Welcome to my store. How can I help you? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah! Beats the old butcher's table, doesn't it? <laughs> so what can I get for you today, sir? How the hell are you? Pretty good. Got some land in Great Plains. Trying to get a small ranch going. Really? Wow, good for you. Staying out of trouble then? I wouldn't go that far, but I'm trying. Who'd have thought it? John Marston. Wow. So Pearson now runs the general store of Rhodes, meaning his life of nefarious deeds, or at least association with nefarious deeds, is in the past. You can't kill him, unfortunately, but you can rob him. However, if you throw a Molotov into his shop at just the right angle, you can indeed kill him. Not that I tried on this save, but definitely on a previous one somewhere. But for the sake of gravitas, I decided not to disrupt the peace that our old friend here had found. But for the most part, from here on out, he will function as a simple storekeeper. In a town that was once shot to hell by the gang he was once a part of. Despite the interesting place to set down his roots, he keeps the gang very close to his heart. Or at least his counter. If we come back again, we can also learn that Pearson is happily married. So, I, I meant to ask last time. Are Abigail and Jack, uh, okay? You're still with them? Yeah, yeah, they're doing fine. Jack's nearly a young man now. Oh, good. 
Good, I'm glad to hear that, I'm glad. You know, I always like those two. Anyway, what can I do you for? Hey! Who are you talking to? Just an old friend! Well, have you tidied those shelves? Yes, dear. Who's that? That's my wife, Ethel. A wonderful woman. Changed my life. I just feel like I was a different person back then. Or a different Pearson, you might say. <laughs> huh? His jokes still need some work. Next, we need to head to Saint Denis so we can find Tilly Jackson, who we can find on the street east of the general store, sat on a bench awaiting a trolley. John! That sounds familiar. John Marston. Hello. Miss Tilly. That's Mrs. Tilly to you. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm well. Well and happy and... I miss you and Abigail. She's well. Jack's well. All is well, I think. I, I never thanked you for what you did. Oh, there's the trolley. I still think about all of you all the time. My life, it's different now. Mine too. But I still see a bunch of Charles and Uncle and Sadie. So, not quite so different as Abigail would like. I married a lawyer. He's a fine man. We live in a house. Us too. I'm sorry, I've got to go. I'm late. But can I write to you and Abigail someplace? Yeah, we're up at Beecher's Hope, over in Great Plains, West Elizabeth. I'll try. Be well, John Marston. And write to us Tilly Jackson does, as a few days later, back on the dining room table at Beecher's Hope, we will find a letter from her. The letter reads, Dear Abigail and John, I hope you're both well. It's me, Tilly. Tilly Jackson as I was, and Tilly Pierre as I am now. I'm a married woman, and more than that, I am a mother. I have given birth to a beautiful little girl, and so far she is doing well. My husband is a lawyer from Haiti, and I live in a fancy house in town. I'm very genteel and we have servants. How you would laugh at me if you could see me. I feel like the biggest fraud alive, but my husband, who is a very understanding man, tells me everyone is a fraud and we are all the same underneath. And I know he speaks the truth. I miss you both and I was so happy to learn that you are well and I hope Jack is too. He must be so big by now. I miss him and I think it was that time I spent being an aunt to him that made me want to be a mother myself. You were quite right, Abigail. It's the greatest feeling alive. In spite of my happy life and my immense good fortune, a part of me misses the old days something rotten. Silly old Miss Grimshaw and angry Mr. Pearson and kindly Hosea, who was like a father to me. And you both and poor dear Arthur and all them bastards. And Karen who was a sister to me and who I miss every day. I never heard what happened to her. Deep down, I know the drink did for her. I still see my darling Mary Beth, who is now a lady novelist, which both surprised me and did not surprise me at all, if that makes any sense. I just wanted to share my happy news with you, for you are my family, only one I really got, aside from my husband and my baby girl. Yours, Tilly. Ah, how touching. Tilly now enjoys the life of Saint Denis High Society, where she chose to raise a family. Next, we need to head north of Saint Denis, past Van Horn to Annisburg, where we will find Rain's Fall. It's quite a lengthy ride up, so definitely don't spare your horse, batter the shit out of it if you have to, because we will find Rain's Fall by the post office at the train station in Annisburg, where he's waiting for a train. Obviously, he's not gonna go anywhere, it's a game, it's scripted. However, don't ruin the immersion, guys. Hello? Didn't I meet you a long time ago? I don't know. Was, uh, Arthur? Arthur Morgan? Oh, yes. My name is Rangeful, and I'm Jim Milton. John Marston. Oh. Is Arthur, uh... He passed away a long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He saved my life. He gave his. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> and you? I know you had tough times. Ah, uh, well... My people aren't really a tribe. We're just a bunch of families, I suppose. But we're in Canada now. It's, uh... What are you doing here? 
I don't really know. My son, I suppose. Oh, he fell. I, I know. I'm sorry. I've got a son. I'm very sorry. Oh, it was a long time ago now. Well, it's good to see you, Mr. Marston. <laughs> and you. Such a peaceful man. As we learn, his tribe now settled in Canada, though he doesn't describe them as much of a tribe anymore. And his reason for being here now was his son he supposes, Eagle Flies, who died in Chapter 6, whose grave we visited in the last Red Dead video we did. To revisit our next old friend, we need to head north of Annisburg, because here we will find Charlotte Balfour. You can do the Stranger missions for Charlotte as John, however, if you do that, you cannot get this final cutscene. Hello there. Can I help you? I uh, think you knew a friend of mine. A fella called Arthur Morgan. Came by and helped you with some hunting and skinning probably seven or eight years back. Yes, of course. Or I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Unfortunately, he passed soon after. I figured he might not have had long left. Such a shame. He found me at my lowest point and he lifted me up. Glad to see you're doing well, ma'am. He wrote fondly of you. Oh, I couldn't be happier. Listen, it, it's a long way out here. You're welcome to take whatever you need from the house for your travel. No, no, that ain't necessary. Please, I have everything I need and more. He gave me the ability to survive. And now I'm writing. Any friend of Arthur's is a friend of mine. Please take something. It would make me happy. Well, that's very kind of you, ma'am. Now we can take something from Charlotte's house, which I suppose is nice. A little bit odd, but nice. The house's floor plan looks like a knob, but it's nice to be able to inform Charlotte of Arthur's passing if you helped her as Arthur. You take care of yourself out here, ma'am. Moving on, this final one is not a character that we see again, however we can read about him, and that is Reverend Swanson. In issue 74 of the Blackwater Ledger, we can read an article titled Reverend Swanson Leads New York Church which reads as follows. Reverend Orville Swanson was inducted into his official capacity as minister at the First Congregational Church of New York this week. Having moved to the city to accept the position, a service was held and then a reception was given to celebrate the appointment. Encouraging reports from attendees indicate that Reverend Swanson delivered an impressioned and heartfelt sermon about acknowledging sin and seeking redemption. He spoke about his own break from faith, a dark period when he could not attend church, falling into sin, depravity and wanton gluttony. He chronicled the period where he rediscovered his faith and began witnessing on street corners, to then become an assistant pastor at a church in Ohio and now New York. During his recent attendance at the convention meeting of the first congregational churches, he delivered a very moving oration. Impressing attendees as an eloquent and persuasive speaker, he was almost immediately offered the position. Through this, we learn that Swanson is doing okay, he's just many miles away, and a million miles further from the gang that he was once a part of. And that brings us to the end of today's video, in which we encountered some familiar faces and caught up with what they were doing post the end of Red Dead Redemption 2. So, thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super fantastic. I'm currently working on a project that I'm extremely excited for, so I can't wait to share more about that when it's ready. But until next time, of course, take care and goodbye.